new player's guide to sealed in flesh and blood. Have you heard of the new trading card game, Flesh and Blood? Maybe you've looked at a great explanation video on how the game works, and now just don't know how to start playing. One of the best ways, both as a beginner and an experienced player, to enjoy Flesh and Blood is through Sealed. As a beginner, Sealed is a great way to venture into the world of Wrath and fight your first battle, so how does Sealed work? In Sealed, each player opens six fresh packs of any given set and builds a 30-card deck with only the cards they opened in those packs. Sealed is the format you'll be playing at any Flesh and Blood pre-release, but it is also a great way to just get into your first games with friends. As such, it is an awesome way for new players to learn and understand how to build a deck and play your first game. And what's great about Sealed is since each player only needs six booster packs, there is not a high cost to entry. You and your friends, regardless of how new or old of a player you are, are starting at the same point, six booster packs. And that's the only cost to get your Sealed deck started. But don't be fooled, while the barrier to entry is low, winning in Sealed is not only reliant on luck, but a lot of skill, where even the most experienced players might need help. This video will introduce you to the whole process of building a Sealed deck and what to look out for. If you're playing at a pre-release at your local game store, then you are playing with cards from the most recent set. Most sealed tournaments, which are known as the Callings, will also be limited to the most recent set. It is therefore a good idea to have a rough look at the cards, heroes, and mechanics of a set. You don't have to memorize every single card, but being aware of what the general game plan is for certain heroes can give you a huge leg up when heading into the deck building portion. These cards can all be easy easily viewed and accessed on the Flesh and Blood TCG website. Here you can scroll through an entire set or just look at the main cards for each hero and their base weapons to get a better understanding of which avenues of play might be available for you. Let's begin with the process of sealed deck construction. Regardless of venue, be it a major tournament or just your local game store, each player will get six booster packs. Your goal is to build a 30-card deck with cards out of those six packs. Your venue should provide you with access to all the heroes and their base weapons. You do not need to open a hero or their base weapon to play them. If you're just playing at a friend's house and you don't have them all available, keep a a good look at all the tokens that you and those around you open in your packs. The hero and weapon cards, as well as any equipment you might want to play, do not count against your 30 card deck. If you end up in a situation where you do not have enough playables for your chosen deck, you always have the option to add cracked bauble cards to your deck. You have a set time of 45 minutes to construct a deck from those six packs. Yes, you will need to build your deck within that time limit. This is a great reason why you should familiarize yourself with some of the cards beforehand, as the less time spent reading the cards, though it does explain the cards, will result in more time to build your deck. Additionally, this is another reason why you may find this guide helpful, as it will help streamline the process. Step 1. Sort your cards. Once you are allowed to begin, open your booster packs one at a time and sort your cards. Traditionally, you want to sort by hero-specific class cards, non-hero-specific cards, and equipment. Depending on the format, make sure that you know which cards can be played with which hero. Once you have finished opening all of the packs and have sorted your cards, identify which one of the heroes would make the strongest deck. Go through the number of cards for each hero with a rough estimate of the generic cards you have. If you feel like you will have a hard time getting to 30 cards, it might be easier to focus your efforts on one of the other heroes that have more options and or more powerful cards. Step 2. Identify your hero. To identify your hero, you want to look for the hero that has the highest average power level across all their playable cards. In Flesh and Blood Limited, you are playing with 30 cards, which means a lot of the time you will see the majority of your deck. A deck which will have a playable hand regardless of which cards you draw will be much more equipped to win a game than a deck that only has one or two standout cards while sporting a lot of unplayable cards. A rough look through the cards after sorting is usually enough to already 
already dismiss one or even two classes. To further narrow down your class, now look for bombs and synergies to finalize your pick. Bombs are cards that are the biggest threat. Flesh and Blood is designed in a way that your rares and commons can be just as impactful as legendaries or mythics. So be sure to not dismiss any of the powerful rare or even common attacks that might pack quite some heat. Additionally, what might help you is to evaluate your game plan for the available heroes and figure out how many of the cards will support that game plan. Do you have a defensive hero, but a lot of your cards have low or no defensive values? Do you want to go aggressive, but almost all of your cards are blue cards with lower attack values? Which cards are your key attacks to try to get damage in, and what cards would support that? After going through all of this, you should have a good idea of what hero to pick. It should be one that has a good power level across all the cards, possibly a bomb or two, and a rough game plan that you can envision for your games. Step 3. Identify the core of your deck. After having found your hero, this is the time to build your deck. Sort out the weapon and hero as well as all possible equipment cards. Having this in front of you will be a big help when evaluating synergies. The first step is to make sure you have enough attack actions or ways to attack. Most limited heroes will focus on using attack cards with their weapon and support. If you play a deck with no or very few attack cards, your options to deal damage to your opponent are very limited. As as such, find all the attack cards that you want to play and have them ready. The next step is to evaluate synergy cards. Looking at your attack actions, find cards that will synergize with your hero. For example, do the attacks you have all have a specific elemental fusion? If that's the case, cards with that specific element just got a lot stronger. Is your hero looking for multiple attacks a turn? That means you want to look for ways to look for other cheap attack cards or ways to give your strong attacks go again. These attack cards and the cards that will synergize with them make up the core of your deck and strategy. Step 4. Supplement your deck to fill needs. Having evaluated your main attack plan and the synergistic cards, now we need to evaluate the pitch count. How many resources does your deck need? That will heavily depend on the core of your deck. Do the attack actions all cost 3 or even more than 3? If that's the case, you want to make absolutely sure that your deck has enough blue cards, cards that pitch for 3, in order to pay for your resource-intensive cards. Or do you have a lot of 1 or even 0 resource attack cards? This means you are more likely to be able to cut down on cards with high pitch value while supplementing your deck with more red cards cards that pitch for one but have higher attack value for that extra firepower. Last but not least, make sure that your defenses are also in a good spot. We all know the best offense is a good defense. Evaluate the cards in your deck for their defensive value. If there are a lot of cards that block for very little or even nothing, it's worth thinking about changing some of them to cards with a higher block value. Step 5. For more experienced players, a good knowledge of the format can make all the difference. Information and knowledge is the greatest power. Having looked at the format and cards in a set beforehand can have a huge effect on how you evaluate cards. For example, in the set Monarch, the Illusionist class has very high-powered cards that you can easily stop with six-powered attacks on defense. In the Monarch Limited environment, that makes the six-powered cards premium or high-powered cards. Does the Limited environment have a lot of Dominate? If there are a lot of attacks that carry the Dominate keyword, defensive reactions suddenly got stronger. A lot stronger. Does the limited environment have good ways to deal with arcane damage? If not, suddenly arcane damage becomes basically unblockable. Having a rough understanding of a limited environment can help make your card evaluation a lot easier and help you with understanding the power level of the cards in the context of the cards around it. There are many excellent resources for learning more about limited environments of current or even past sets. Some of those resources are other devoted flesh and blood content creators, such as the ones that I will link in this video's description. Feel free to explore this fine content, as well as post about content that I have not listed, as these are the kind of resources that help make you a better, more experienced player. Final thoughts. Do not build more than a 30-card deck, period. 
While it seems tempting, you want to make sure to build your deck as consistent as possible with a streamlined game plan. More cards in your deck will lead to more inconsistencies. Do not go above 30 cards. Do not get enticed by one super cool card. Rather, make sure that the average power level of the cards in your deck are good so that any four card hand can hold their own. Sealed is the easiest format to just jump in and play, and I hope very much this video helped you with making that first step all the more easier. I suggest just getting six packs with a friend, building your first sealed deck and saving the pool. You can sleeve up the cards for your 30 card deck, put the rest inside a deck box, keep it with you, throw it in your glove compartment for when you go out to lunch. Play those decks, rebuild them after a certain amount of time. You can start playing Flesh and Blood for the cost of just six packs and then not have to spend another penny until you feel ready to do so and still get quite a few different games out of those decks. Are there any tips and tricks that you discovered while playing Flesh and Blood Sealed? Do you have any other questions? If so, please leave a comment below and remember to like and subscribe.